Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the five number summary and the 1.5 times IQR test for outliers. First, we need a definition. The quartiles of a data set are the three values that divide the set into four equal parts. The first lies above about 25% of the data. The second quartile lies, of, lies above about half of the data. And the third lies above about 75% of the data. Now we use the word about because the set might not be totally divisible into exactly four equal parts. The more common way of saying second quartile is the median. It splits the data set in half when the set's ordered from lowest to highest. Typically you find the first and third quartiles by first finding the median, dividing the set into an upper half and a lower half, and then finding the medians of those two halves. The median of the upper half is the third quartile, and the median of the lower half is the first quartile. Let's do an example. Find the quartiles of the following set. So we have 17 values here. When they're, low, when they're ordered from lowest to highest, the median is going to be the one in the middle. That is the ninth value. This is going to have eight values smaller and eight values larger. So the median, or second quartile, is 42. Now we look at the smaller half of the data. We ignore that median and we just take the eight values that are smaller than it. The median of this set is going to be 18. The two numbers in the middle are 16 and 20. It's an even number of values. And so we go halfway between those two to get 18. That's the median of the smaller half of the data. Therefore, it's Q1. Finally, looking at the larger half of the data, taking the mean, I'm sorry, the median of that, we get 78. So Q1 is 18, Q2 is 42, and Q3 is 78. The five number summary of a data set consists of those three quartiles, as well as the minimum and maximum values in a data set. So for this previous example, we have a five number summary that is 5, 18, 42, 78, and 93. Um, and you see that I've labeled each of those values with min, q1, m, q3, and max. The interquartile range is going to be the difference between q3 and q1. So in this case, 78 minus 18, so 60. The interquartile range is a measure of spread. In particular, it's describing the spread of the middle half of the data. In particular, it's not taking into account the extreme values in the data set, just sort of that meaty middle. Let's do another example. The exam scores of 22 students are listed below. Describe the distribution of scores. So we're going to want to do a five number summary and an IQR on this. But first, let's see why other measures of center and spread might not be the best here. The mean of this set is 75.3. Um, that's going to be fairly misleading as a measure of typical student performance on this exam. Nearly all the students did better than 75. That mean is being dragged down by the extremely low values, 2 and 27, students that may not have even been coming to class. Similarly, the range is going to be misleading as a measure of spread. Yes, the values range from 2 to 100, so there's a, me uh, sorry, a range of 98. However, the vast majority of students are in a fairly narrow band. So let's compute the five number summary. Of course, the min is 2 and the max is 100. It's an even um, data set. There's an even number of values. So we take the 2 in the middle and split the difference. Here they're both 80, so the median is 80. And then the medians of the top half and bottom half are going to be 76 and 83. So the IQR is only 7. The middle half of scores on this test are between 76 and 83. By looking at this measure, we see that the scores are actually fairly tightly packed around that median. The 1.5 times IQR test is a convenient way to check a data set for outliers. It's a rule of thumb, and it says that any value that is more than 1.5 IQRs below Q1 or above Q3 should be considered an outlier. So let's use this last example and test it for outliers. Here's our five, our five number summary again. Remember we computed that the IQR was seven. 
So we're going to multiply that by 1.5 to get 10.5. We subtract that from Q1 and add it to Q3. So between 65.5 and 96.5, that's going to be the range where we do not consider values to be outliers. Anything less than 65.5 or greater than 96.5 should be considered an outlier according to this standard. In this case, we find that 2, 27, and 100 should be considered outliers. The proper perspective on that as a, as a professor is that you shouldn't take those three scores into account, or very much into account, when putting together the curve for an exam, for that exam.